So about a year ago, I started building this channel right here in which I started speaking about personal finance, investing and money for people so that they could educate themselves on the subject, start building wealth and all that fun stuff. Now here we are about a year minus two days and I reached 1000 subscribers on the platform and today I want to speak about how you can actually do it yourself, how you can do it faster than I did and how you can actually start monetizing your channel as soon as possible. So the first advice that I have for you on this is that you need to start because I know how it is, it's just like investing. When you wanna start a YouTube channel, you're like, okay, let's start it and then you never do it. That's exactly the same thing as investing as I just said. So. As soon as you have these thoughts and you know you want to do something with YouTube, you want to build an audience and all that stuff, just start making videos. So just take your phone, place it on some books and start filming your first video. You don't have to find a niche at first, just make your first video about whatever subject you are interested in and over time you'll slowly start to make videos that are more niche down on topics that really interest you and that interest the audience that you're also targeting. And the cool thing with starting like this is that every single other video that you will upload after this one will get better and better every single time. If you don't trust me, that's completely fine. Now we're gonna go through my channel and show you how it was one year ago. So here we are on my channel and I'm actually gonna show you the second video that I uploaded because on the first one I didn't show my face, but on the second video that I uploaded, I was actually speaking about my first month of investing and how I was feeling about it. And let's go and watch how bad it is. What to expect from your first month of investing? Watch the whole video to find out. So as you can probably tell, the quality is way different than the video you are watching right now. The lighting is not good, the mic is not good, and the way I'm speaking also is way different. I was not confident enough, and that's something that you have to go through when you start a YouTube channel, because of course, when you start, you don't know how to speak to a camera and speaking to yourself pretty much, so that's the beginning of my channel. Crappy start, right? Yes, I know it. But right now, what I'm gonna do is show you actually another video that I made two weeks ago that is speaking about my first year of investing. So one year later, how is it looking? About a year ago, so on the 1st of January of 2020, I started investing my money in the stock market. And today I wanted to go back to this year with you guys. So as you can tell, way better lights, way better audio, the quality is looking awesome. It's also well edited, so when I'm speaking, there's no blank spots and I'm explaining something way more confidently than I was doing for the first videos. And that difference just happened in one year. So imagine one year after this video that I'm making right now, maybe my channel will be completely different and the way I will be presenting my video will be way better. So now understand that I was just like you. I was filming on an iPhone with no lights and nothing else. So the quality was not the best, but I actually got some people to subscribe to my channel because what's the most important thing about YouTube is what you are speaking about and how you are presenting the subject. If you are speaking about something that people are interested in, they won't care about the quality that much and when you then improve over time, people will be just happier that the quality is better. So just start right now and in one year, I can tell you, you'll be amazed by the difference in quality of your old versus new videos. The second topic that I wanted to talk about today is that you need to make content that people are actually looking for and that doesn't have that much competition. Let me show you what I mean with other examples on my channel. My channel is all about how to start investing, how to invest and how to build wealth. So one of the questions that my audience was probably asking themselves was what is the best investment app that I can use? Now I'll let you try and make a video about this but guess what? it won't work. For the simple reason that the competition on this kind of topics are amazing. There's so many people, so many big YouTubers making videos that have hundreds of thousands of views or even millions of views about which is the best app to use to start investing. So there is no way that you can compete with these kind of videos. Even if your video is incredible, people won't find it because there are already way bigger videos on the subject on the platform. So what you need to do is to find a way to reduce the audience that is interested into this topic to a more specific niche, as I like to call it, and we're gonna speak about this right now. What I did in this case is that I look at some more specific audiences about the same topic, but with more details. So this video that I made is called 
the best investment apps for Europeans in 2020. Now, what is so good about this video is that I was not only focusing on one niche, but rather three niches. Like I was speaking for what is the best investment apps, that's the first thing, for Europeans, smaller audience, and in 2020, that's an even smaller audience. So everybody that was looking for this topic actually found my video because before me, there was like only two other videos on the subject. So this one was able to rank in the search algorithm so that it was showing first when people were looking for these kind of keywords. So right now, this video got more than 38,000 views and brought to my channel like more than 390 subscribers. If you can find topics that have small audiences around it and not that many competition, but people are still looking for these keywords, you win the game on YouTube. You'll get attention as a small channel in no time. And even if there is like two videos on it, you can make a video that's a little bit better presented than the other ones. Well, your video is gonna rank in search, which means that when people are looking for the keyword, it's actually gonna show up like in the three first videos. So you have way more chances of people actually discovering what you do and clicking on your videos. Now, next advice, and that's something really, really important on YouTube is how you can actually make people come to your videos. Because let's say that you did what I told you to do. So you created a video that's top list into the search algorithm for whatever keywords you were using and people search this keyword and then you have these like four first videos that are presented to them. Well, even if you got the best video there is about this subject on earth, well, people won't click on it because of the thumbnail. And if people don't click on your videos, well, you don't get views and you probably don't get possible subscribers. So while you should master, and this is really, really important, I can't say this enough, create good thumbnails. Let's take my video for example. I am not the best when it comes to thumbnail creation, but I'm starting to understand patterns and things that work for my videos. So let's go back to my channel and look at some thumbnails and see what's good and what's not. So what we're gonna do right now actually is compare thumbnails that I had on my older videos that actually changed since then to my newer videos. Okay, here we are, one of the new thumbnails that I'm using for my videos. And as you can see, the really important thing about thumbnails is that you need the viewer to fit Feel like there is emotions on your thumbnail. So I'm always trying to do like some uh, funny faces and actually make people feel emotions, which is really, really important to connect with them. And let's compare it to the older version, which is this one. I know. It looks horrible, but that was my beginning and I didn't know better. But why are thumbnails so important? Well, that's really easy. It's just because if people don't like your thumbnails and it's not like something they want to click on, they won't click on it, you will get no views and no subscribers. So the more people you can actually attract from an algorithm because they are showing your thumbnail, it's good, they click on it and you get a view and possibly a subscriber behind that, it's good, that's really good. But also don't forget not to clickbait people. We're actually gonna see a little bit later on in this video that watch time is also something really important. and if if you do clickbait, people will watch your videos also. Okay, so I just spoke about thumbnails and watch time, which are, in my opinion, really important aspects of your YouTube channel. So let's go now through the two metrics that are the most important ones on your YouTube channel, the ones that you need to maximize and really work on. First one is the CTR, and the CTR is included with your thumbnail. So CTR means click-through rates. It's every single person as a percentage that are clicking on your video when they are presented by it. So let's say people are scrolling through YouTube and 100 people are actually presented with your video so they see that thumbnail or your video. Only 10 of them click on it, then you get a 10% click-through rate, which is already pretty good. But CTR can be divided in also two different informations on the YouTube analytics. The first one is the thumbnail, because the more appealing it is to the viewer to see this video and wants to click on it, the more likely they will click on it. Makes sense. The second thing that's really important for CTR is a good title, and you need to mix thumbnails and tie it all together so that it brings the attention of the viewer. The really important thing that you need to know about thumbnails and titles is that they need to be different. Don't put your exact title into the thumbnail because if people are watching your thumbnail and they read the title, they're like, okay, I don't get any more information. Just look at this video right here. So you have the thumbnail that is speaking about while doing an exam and people are like, why is he showing money while doing an exam? What the hell is this? And then they read the title of the video, which is how I made $2,000 in an hour. And they're like, yeah, but how did he make $2,000 in an hour 
while doing an exam, so they click on the video. Don't put the exact same thing as title and thumbnail. Just separate them and make the viewer who wants to come to your video because these are not the same thing and they have like a relation, but they don't know how. Okay, so let's go back to my channel. I will show you a video that got some pretty low CTR and one that got pretty high CTR. And of course, you can really tell the difference between these two. If we look at the first one, we got more than 10% CTR, which is pretty good. And on the other one, we got a really low CTR if you compare it to the first one. And you'll get better at this over time, but by trying new thumbnails and new titles, you might actually be able to fix the CTR in some kind of ways to get more people interested in the video and more people actually clicking on it. Now, it's great that people are clicking on your videos, but the second most important metric that I want to speak about is watch time, because if people are clicking on your video and immediately leaving it to either watch another video or just leave the platform, it's a really bad signal from the YouTube algorithm to YouTube so they will stop promoting this video. Because of course, YouTube as a platform is also a business and they want to make the most money possible. And how does YouTube make money? Well, they show ads on videos and the longer you are watching videos, the more ads they can show. So YouTube will promote videos that have a longer watch time. So let's say you make a video about the best spaghetti you can find in Vancouver. Of course, this video is pretty interesting to some people, but for others it isn't. Now you make a great thumbnail, a thumbnail that is appealing and people want to click on this video about spaghetti. That's cool, but the first thing you say when they come to the video is, hey everybody, today I'm in my house and I'm wondering if I'm uh, putting these socks or these shoes or I don't really know, you know what? I'm gonna go and get some groceries. People will be like, hey, that's not what I wanted to watch and they leave your video. If they do so, bad signal. This video is gonna disappear in the deepest, darkest part of YouTube where nobody wants to go. But if on the other hand, the first thing that you say when they come to your video about the best spaghetti that you can find in Vancouver is, hey guys, today I'm gonna show you the best spaghetti place you can find in Vancouver. People will be like, yes, that's exactly what I wanna see. Show me the spaghetti. And if you show people what they are looking for on your video, you are most likely gonna have a higher watch time. So what's cool about watch time on YouTube is that you can actually compare them by going into the analytics of each videos and going into this graph right here. This graph is showing when are people actually leaving your video. It starts at 100%, so when everybody's watching, and you can actually see how many people watch through the whole video. Now, the most important part of this graph that you need to watch out for is the first 10 seconds. If you don't catch people's attention in the first 10 seconds, they are most likely gonna leave like, you, you can actually lose like 30 to 40% in the first 10 seconds if you don't go right into the content. So what you need to focus on is having a high CTR, so good thumbnail and title combination, and make people watch your video for a long period of time. If you can do that, well, you are probably gonna get pretty successful on YouTube. And also don't forget that it takes time. It's okay to take time to build a YouTube channel. You can be at 100 subscribers after a year, it's fine. You can have 10,000 subscribers after a year, it's fine too. There's no numbers that you need to compare yourself to others. And if you feel like it's not working, keep uploading, you'll get better at it and people will be more interested into your content over time. Now, if you guys are interested into building wealth and making money, go and watch this video right here that will show you how you can start investing right now. Or on the other hand, you can go and watch this video that might be great too. I hope you guys enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel. I see you guys next time. Bye-bye.